and welcome to the lecture for chapter one from the Fraser Seitel textbook, The Practice of Public Relations. Uh, I like, you know, chapter one is, uh, it gives a real nice uh, summary, kind of PR 101 on what public relations is is all about, going through everything from uh, some, some various definitions that are floating around out there for, for public relations, as well as going into detail on what who constitutes the, the the public or the publics rather of, of public relations um, as well as some of the skill sets that PR practitioners need to uh, need to bring to the table so a kind of great way to get things started in in the class and you should be able to walk away from the end of this chapter with uh, hopefully a much better understanding and knowledge of what public relations is and also what it isn't uh, that'll help you going through the uh, through the next um, uh, the next chapters. What, you know, Seitel talks about how in the 21st century that public relations is definitely on an upward swing in terms of career potential and employment and um, importance in the, not just here in the United States but uh, but across the world. So that's good news for future PR practitioners, students who are learning PR now as far as employment outcome down the road that this trend is most likely going to continue. One of the big reasons why it's more important now, you know, more than ever, has a lot to do with the fact that though the world of, of, of communication is now in the hands of every man, woman, and, and, and child because of the of the social media revolution. So there are people, you, you know, consumers and so forth, other people out there now have opportunities to communicate about organizations um, that they didn't before. Uh, the, the media. It's, I mean, social media has definitely changed the, the landscape of how we receive news and information. So because communication has become such a, um, uh, you know, kind of a, a free reign beast <laughs> now, organizations and companies um, need to have skilled practitioners, have the good solid communication plans and communication tactics in mind so that they can keep up with what's being said in the world, uh, the world around them, not just keeping up in terms of communicating the message of what's happening within the organization and the importance and so forth, but also in terms of keeping up and listening to what's being said out there in, in the clutter of all the noise that's that's happening in the in the communication world. So, um, so yeah, big time career growth right now. It's definitely on the upward trend, and it's also gaining in credibility and becoming more and more recognized as an important profession as organizations realize, boy, how we present ourselves to our, our publics is important now more than more than ever. It, so Seitel talks about some of the different definitions based upon what the Public Relations Society of America says and what he brings, you know, brings to the table. But probably what's more important, what the most important thing when you look at the definitions is understanding that public relations is a, um, it's, it's a two-way Process and Seitel talks about how a PR practitioner serves as the management or organizational interpreter. They are the ones who have to communicate to the public, and we'll talk about the public in just a minute. What the what the policies and the position are, and what management and organization is trying to present itself as. What's really important for that to, to happen is the PR person shouldn't necessarily just be. Uh, um, just a, just the, the management's voice at saying whatever management says. The PR people are also hopefully looked at within the organization as being a um, a trusted advisor, and that person should have a seat, um, you know, at the at, at the big kids table at that, at thanks Thanksgiving and be able to offer advice and strategy to management on how to best present itself. And if management's wise, and if they have the right person in place, they're going to be they're going to be doing that. Um, so it's not just simply mouthing off, you know, communicating to the rest of the world what's happening within the organization. There's also feedback given to management on what the publics are saying and what their concerns are. And that's how Seitel talks about the PR person is also a public interpreter um, that interprets what the public wants and what they're saying to management. So it's very much a two-way process. Um, it's taking in information um, and then sending, uh, sending, information, uh, sending information out. Uh, what's challenging, though, is that an organization can have um, many publics, and there's that great char uh, chart there within the book, The Circle, that shows all the different publics, stakeholders, audiences 
that a multinational company would be responsible for. And it's not just at a multinational company. I can use here, I'll use the University of Alaska Fairbanks, for, uh, for example, all the different audiences that the university has to communicate to. Obviously, students is a, is a major um, uh, primary audience, but within a university, you have um, internally, you have faculty, staff, and, and current students. You have donors to the university. You have legislators that provide funding. Um, you have parents of parent, uh, parents of students. You have prospective students. Um, even a, a university, not necessarily a multinational company, is going to have a variety of different publics that they have to be responsible for. And so the PR person has to understand who those different publics are and also understand that a message that works for one public might not necessarily work for, um, for the other. Um, and don't we shouldn't dismiss the importance of the internal publics, so those who work within an organization and the role PR plays in communicating to them because that helps the overall goal of an, of an organization. If uh, people within the organization um, understand what management's trying to do and buy into policies and so forth, those people become um, ambassadors for the organization. They feel better about their job because they're more informed and they'll say positive things about the organization to um, to others. So the internal publics is at some times, depending on the situation or the organization, just as important as the external um, the external audiences. Uh, so Saitel also talks about the, the the functions of PR. Okay, what does a PR person have to do? And there's a pretty extensive list there of different uh, different skill sets, different type of tasks that a PR person could be doing from everything from writing to public affairs to graphic design to advertising and 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 marketing. So that can give you a, you know kind of a real good sense okay what would it be like a day in the life of a PR person that doesn't necessarily mean that one PR person is going to have all those skill sets in a typical organization you have uh, perhaps a PR department and you have uh, people who have strengths in in certain areas again I'll use the university here as, as an example within the department of marketing and, and communications we have someone who's the media relations person we have graphic designers we have web designers we have writers we have we have editors all people who have these different types of skill sets that was listed in the book and you work together as a PR team to help um, you know promote what the organization is um, is trying to do I said that this chapter covers what uh, both what public relations is and what it isn't, and what it isn't basically boils down to it isn't spin. And you know, Cytel and many other PR practitioners feel very passionate about this 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 notion that public relations is is a spin that we try to spin a story. That has a very negative connotation on it. Spinning implies that there's some some lying or some covering up of the truth. And as we get into talking about ethics. First and foremost, one of the most important things for a public relations practitioner is to be honest and to be um, ethical. It's, that's held in such high regard within the, uh, the National PR Organization, the Public Relations Society of, um, of America. And it's why this book has a whole chapter dedicated to the notion of ethics. So, so more about that to come, but the, this little uh, section here that talks about spin kind of gives you some idea of you know, just what what we aren't saying when we say public relations. Then finally, the chapter closes with, okay, what type of person works within public relations? Um, going over what, you know, we talk about skill sets, different uh, tactics, et cetera, that a person has to have. But I like how uh, Cytel talks about some of the different values that a PR practitioner should have if they're going to be successful. And of course, once again, there's the whole notion of, um, of ethics that's included in there. So. Um, so that's the overview of the of the chapter um, between this lect the lecture and uh, reading through the chapter. Um, you should be well prepared for um, taking the first quiz after you see the the um, the, the second lecture. Um, the first quiz does cover both chapter um, chapter one and two. And just a quick note, you know the quizzes are um, obviously open book. You should be able to find all the information. Um, within the first two chapters to some of the questions. If some of the questions appear to be uh, misleading or do you think an answer that uh, the correct answer is not uh, right, um, feel free to challenge. Send me an email, say, okay, I check this, I got it wrong, but here's why I think that's, um, that's true. And um, I'm, I'm 
happy to listen to any type of arguments. If you feel something's wrong, then by all means, please uh, please let me know. So hope you find these lectures you know kind of useful to help guide you through the um, guide you through the chapters. And like I said uh, in the welcome to the class video, the Cytel presents this information in a, you know in a pretty um, easy to read format. So that's the first lecture. We will see you uh, for lecture two. Thanks.